Nominal, interesting word, means something that exists in name only. So what would a nominal Christian look like? Let's find out on today's episode. Greetings, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. We do this by using true life stories of real people. I'm Timothy Gregory, and I have a question for you. Have you ever met someone that said they were a Christian or assumed they were a Christian? Maybe their heritage is Christian or they... um, They grew up with Christian practices, but with nominal Christians, there's no spiritual hunger in their lives. There's no desire to know God more intimately. Maybe maybe they don't uh, read the Bible or delight in the teaching of it. They basically, uh, well, they basically live their lives for other things, other pleasures, mostly themselves. Their claims of faith are, uh, well, merely words, not a reality. Perhaps you know someone like that. Perhaps it's you. If so, this Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast is for you. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus says that when he comes back to judge the world, there will be a whole group of people calling him Lord. They will say to him, Lord, Lord, we've done all these uh, uh, impressive things on your behalf. Because they've been thinking that Jesus was their friend. And they were all good with Jesus. They were down with Jesus. And Jesus will say to these people, Depart from me. I never knew you. Can you imagine if Jesus were to say that to you? Thomas Urban was one of these very people. And he is going to tell you all about it in this week's episode. Also, you want to stick around because later we're going to give you a sneak peek into some special effects for this episode. And we'll give the rest of you an opportunity to enter our sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize. And I think it's a prize that you're really going to like if we draw your name. We're only going to draw one name, so you get one shot. Um, But I really think you're going to like it. Uh, First, though, let's get to it, folks. Part two of the true testimony of Thomas Irvin. Okay, door's secure. Good thing we got all the AIM-9 missiles unloaded. Why is that? His driving's getting worse and worse. (laughs) He must have a date tonight he's trying to get to. Can you imagine having an accident in a truck full of missiles? Hey, it's bad enough with me sitting on these flares. Talk about being in the hot seat. (laughs) Whoa! 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 What what, 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 what are you doing? Hey, man, look out! Grab the flares! (laughs) Thomas! He flew out the back! Stop the truck! Stop the truck! The man in our story was on a desperate quest, a search for his father. Although he longed for his earthly father, his search would lead him to his true father. Here is part two of the true story of Thomas Irvin, right now on Unshackled. The doctors had to scrub the gravel from my face. I had stitches on the left upper lip and stitches on my left chin. I damaged my left shoulder, left hip, left knee. I was in great physical condition, 200 pounds with 8% body fat, so I recovered quickly, except for my left shoulder. In the summer, my squadron was sent to Iraq. An A-10 Warthog was our plane. We were the second A-10 unit to enter the war. The sound of that jet was calling me, but I was still sidelined by my shoulder. That's when I was approached by my lieutenant colonel. All of us in the squadron had great respect for this man. He didn't just bark orders, he cared for each one of us. All my life, I had been desperately looking for a father, listening for his voice, and God brought me the lieutenant colonel. But it wouldn't last long. Thomas, we need our best over there. 
What's the latest on your shoulder? Still in pain, sir. Let me know the minute you can make it. We need you, Thomas. Whatever you can do. I scheduled an appointment with my doctor right away. I told him I was fine, and I got my medical release. I was in Iraq for six months. Hey, Thomas! Jesse. You okay? Yeah. What's going on with that shoulder? I, uh... Yeah, that's what I thought. Colonel says they need me. I know. I just got rewarded for superior performance, too. It's not worth you messing up your shoulder permanently. You better get checked out. Yeah, and what about your back? Shh. Okay, you got me. Still a lot of pain. Don't let them know, okay? Uh-huh. When we got back to Pope Air Force Base in North Carolina, I went straight to the doctor and had surgery. To help the pain, they prescribed a large amount of Percocet. This would prove to be a very dangerous recipe. Start with anger issues as a base, add self-control problems, toss large doses of heavy drugs to the mix, stir it up, yield disaster. Hey, Thomas, I really need you to check out that wear tolerance on that- You already told me that seven times, really? <laughs> hey, I don't think it was quite- Speaking of wear tolerance, I have no tolerance for someone nagging me day in and day out, telling me how to do my job. Get off my back, will you? Hey, Thomas, I'm sorry, okay? Urban. Uh, yes, sir. Homeboy. My office, stat. Yes, sir. Urban. You're one of the best that I've got. But that gives you no excuse to treat your fellow airmen like you've been doing. On top of that, Irvin, that man out there is your friend. Uh, I apologize, Colonel. It won't happen again. There's the problem. That's exactly what you said the last two times. I've warned you again and again, you'd better get your anger under control. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Irvin, this is the last time I'm going to have to tell you. Thank you, sir. It won't happen again. I don't think you get my meaning, Urban. This is your last time. Three strikes. Sir? Your service has been exemplary. So I'll make sure you get a general discharge under honorable conditions. Sir, I... Urban, I am deeply, deeply disappointed. His words hit me like a shockwave and kept repeating over and over in my mind. It felt like someone suddenly slammed the brakes on my world and I crashed through the windshield. I was trying to make sense of what happened. Meantime, my friend was on heavy meds as well, morphine and Percocet. Many nights, we binged on meds just to escape the cruel world we created for ourselves. One night, we took it to the next level. You're the best man, the best airman they had. And they kicked me to the curb just like that. Just like that. Despicable. You know what we're missing here? Sanity. Whiskey. <laughs> what? The drugs aren't doing it anymore, you know? I know. This right here is the crowning touch. A toast to us and our amazing future. Here, here. My friend went off to a bar. I stayed home. More pills, more drinking. A fatal combination. I can't, I can't see. I can't see anything. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse, where are you? Oh, he left, he left me alone. I can't see. Wait, what's that? What's that sound? What's happening to me? That's uh, police radio, Mr. Urban. Police radio? No, oh, please. Please help me. Where am I? You're in the back seat of a police vehicle. Please? Settle down, Mr. Urban. What's going on? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I'm starting to see again. Yeah? What do you see? That's my... That's my house, but the front door is gone, and all, all my furniture... Where? Why is my stuff out on the yard like that? Officer, what's happening to me? I was so drugged, so disoriented, I had no idea what was going on. 
I spent the next three days in withdrawal. I curled up on the cold concrete floor of a jail cell in the fetal position. Hell is said to be a place that's totally separate from God. I got a small taste of that as I laid there in my cell. <laughs> really, this was a prison that I had created for myself. My poor choices, my lack of self-control, my anger all brought me here. Yes, I could blame all of my troubles on the lack of a father, but really, I knew who it was who put me here. Me. And yet, I so needed to hear his voice. The voice of a father to call me out of the misery of myself, to believe in me, to rebuke me. Instead, I heard the voice of a jail guard. All right, Mr. Irvin, here's some water for you. Drink up, it'll help. I'm praying for you, baby. I felt very close to death, too close. But her words were like a lifeline. I grabbed them and held on tight. <laughs> Hello? Mama? Thomas. Where are you? I've been trying to get a hold of you. Mama, I'm in jail. What? What happened? I'll tell you all about it, but right now I need your help, please. Loyal, faithful, loving. My mom. Thomas, I stuck my neck out for you. Yes, ma'am, I'm well aware. This is the only way I could get you out of jail. But if you go back to the drugs and drink it, Thomas, I love you with all my heart, but there's only so much I can do. The rest you gotta do for yourself, you know? I know. So I researched and looked everywhere for just the right place for you and found this place here in South Haven. The counselor's name is Richard Kilpatrick. This is it here. Thomas, you know what's at stake, right? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, Thomas. I'm sorry for all you've been through. I finally got me a good man in Brian, but all the rest. Oh, Thomas, I'm so sorry. All right, we'll get back to Thomas's story in just a moment, but first I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or... Visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. And then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check. Unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, back to Thomas's story. Richard Kilpatrick, and you're Thomas? Yes, sir. Have a seat, son. Thank you. So, I'm going to tell you up front. Yes, sir. I'm really good friends with the best-selling author. Really? That's right. Told him a little bit about your story and, you know, what your mom shared with me, and, well, he'd like to meet you. He would? Wow. <laughs> what, what author is this? Here's his book. Oh, the Bible. The best-selling book of all time. 
He wants you in it, Thomas. No, you don't have to worry about me. I'm a Christian. All good. Well, if you're a follower of Christ, then you'll want to start hunting for treasure. I'm sorry? God's book is full of treasures. This is where our counseling starts, son. Because in God's word is everything you need for life and godliness. Everything. The greatest stories of all time are inside here. There's history. Kings and chronicles and guests. There's songs and poetry. Royal family tree, sayings from the wisest man who ever lived. Letters to friends, a love poem, and ancient prophecies that have yet to come true and practical advice on how to live your life. I look at reading my Bible like going on a treasure hunt. Take a look at this from King Solomon, the wisest man in history except for Jesus himself. Proverbs 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Wisdom will protect you from evil, Thomas. Proverbs 22.4 says wisdom will lead to riches and honor and life. Mr. Kilpatrick was the first man to sit down and show me the treasure of God's Word. He showed me how God loved me and how God was concerned with my actions and my life. It was all there in His Word. You don't just read the Bible. You feast on it. Read it, learn it, study it, love it. As you read God's Word, God's Word will read you. And day by day, verse by verse, it will change your life. There's one more thing. Yes, sir. Revelation 3.20 is Jesus. Read what Jesus says to you here in Revelation. Okay. Uh, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Think about it, Thomas. Here's the powerful God of the universe. But he doesn't come to you with a SWAT team and bust your door down. He gently knocks. But you got to hear his voice. And you got to open the door. Open the door to him, Thomas. And he'll show you great and mighty things you can't even imagine. Mr. Kilpatrick gave me a lot to think about. And his voice had that deep southern drawl that draws you in and holds you. The voice of a father. I became a defense contractor and was assigned to Saudi Arabia. I spent time in Riyadh at this American compound. The old life, the partying and the drinking called to me, but I could still hear the voice of Mr. Kilpatrick in my thoughts. I found Americans just like me, Abdul and Tasneem from a Muslim family. We became friends. Thomas, it's awful here. Tasneem, keep your voice down. We could be arrested. Our mom went totally off the deep end. She sold out to Islam. She even gave up her American citizenship so she could live here, Saudi Arabia, as a Muslim. Abdul, that's awful. Tasneem, this must be really tough on you as a woman. Ugh, women are treated like dirt here. Animals. Slavery is alive and well, believe me. We lived in America most of our lives. Coming here has been a huge shock. We can see what 1,500 years of Islam does to people. Somehow, some way, I have got to get out of here, Thomas, but I don't know how. So, what's it like to become a Christian? Don't go convert me now. I'm just curious, all right? Oh, well, um, I never really thought of it like becoming a Christian, I kind of grew up with it, I guess. But, you know, you, you just believe, you know? Believe Jesus died, he was buried, and he rose again. Interesting. 
Really, I didn't have a clue. I was just repeating stuff I heard. Something started to disturb me, though. A question that kept digging into my soul. When I got home that night, I walked into my empty room, and the shock of the question hit me. Was I even a Christian? If not, I was in serious trouble. I was headed to hell. Forever. I needed answers, fast. But here I was in Saudi Arabia. No pastor available, no church. I got online, and I found the only pastor I knew of. A pastor from my hometown of Memphis. I don't want to wait till I die to find out if I'm saved or not. After it's too late to do anything about it. You need to have that sweet, wonderful, blessed assurance. A Christian needs to be an exclamation point, standing up straight, not a question mark, all bent over saying, I just wonder if I'm saved. I want you to have an absolute no-so salvation. After listening, I went hunting for treasure. Romans 10, 9, and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay. Uh, God, I believe that. But I've never confessed with my mouth. I've never called on you as my Lord. I've got 29 years of baggage I've been carrying, and I know I can't carry this stuff with me if I'm a Christian. All of my life, I've been searching for the voice of a father. And now, in the silence of my apartment, I can sense a quiet whisper. The quiet whisper of a father calling to me. He was calling me to lay down all that baggage and receive the gift of his son. I remembered back to that time I pulled out my knife to harm my biological father in order to protect my mother. But this wasn't a father I needed to take down. This was a father I needed to take in. And so I did. I knelt down right there in that lonely apartment in the isolation of Saudi Arabia. I repented from all my sins. And for the first time in my life, I called Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. Over the next days, I thought of all the men outside of Brian who had failed me as I was growing up. They weren't men at all. They were little boys in men's bodies. Little boys with temper tantrums who screamed, you can't tell me what to do. And it hit me. I was just as much a boy as they were because I never really grew up. But something was different now. As I continued to read God's word, I began to understand my father. He was calling me to be a man, calling me to be a man after his heart. What happened to you? You look different. I do? Like you're glowing. Huh. Tasneem, when you and Abdul asked me about becoming a Christian, I really didn't have a clue. But I have him now, here in my heart. Okay. Look, I bought you this. A Bible? It's the best-selling book of all time. For good reason. It's not just a book. It's like a treasure chest, full of treasure. In here is everything you need for life and godliness. Everything. Reading this Bible is like going on a treasure hunt. Will you at least take a look? Um, mm, sure. Here you go. I'll put it in your bag before someone sees. Thank you. There's something else. Yes? I'm going to help you get out of here. Wait. What do you mean? I'm going to help you escape from Saudi Arabia. Thomas! You would do that? Anything I can do to help you. Just read that, okay? Okay, okay, I will. Helping Tasneem escape from Saudi Arabia did something for my soul. All my life, I was looking for someone to be my father. This was my chance to change my focus and be like a father to Tasneem, to rescue her, protect her, to bring her to safety. After helping Tasneem escape, 
I wanted to learn all I could about God and His Word, so I moved to Deland, Florida to go to Bible school. While there, I went to a church banquet, and that's when I saw her. Well, the first thing I saw was a beautiful smile. It was a smile that caught my heart. Her name was Kristen. So, you're serving the food tonight? I am. Do you need any help? I don't think so, but that's sweet of you to ask. I need to get a spoon. I'll be right back. Oh, I, I can help with that. A spoon? Well, you know, if it's like a heavy spoon. I think I can handle it. But thank you. We started talking that night, and we never really stopped since that night. Every night, without fail, we talked on the phone, even when I was in Afghanistan. Every single night, even though the communication was spotty and the time difference was ridiculous, Kristen would call. That was Kristen. Loyal, faithful, true. We dated for two years, and then we got married. Kristen and I felt a call on our lives to be missionaries. So we explored the world. Well, online, anyway. Every night at dinner, we went off on the adventure of our imagination and dreamed of the place God would take us one day. So where are we going tonight? Mm, let's try somewhere in Africa. All right. God, where are you calling us? <laughs> Is that God calling? <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Turns out, it was a man from Uganda whom I met in Afghanistan. Kristen, look up Say Say. Hey, excuse me, how, how, do you, how do you spell that again? S-S-E-S-E, -S -E, got it. Islands in Uganda. Uganda? This is so exciting! Uh, well, of course, yes, yeah, we, we, we'd be glad to pray. All right, then. We'll pray and let you know. Thank you. Bye now. It's a series of 84 islands off the northwest shore of Lake Victoria. Thomas, look, it's beautiful, and the people... It says, these islands are inhabited by the Basis tribes who speak Bantu. So what did he say? He said they need missionaries there. He asked us to pray about going. Thomas, do you think? I'm kind of feeling it already. Me too. Well, let's pray. All my years growing up, I was missing the voice of a father. Then I met my spiritual father, Richard Kilpatrick, and he introduced me to my heavenly father. Then God led us to Uganda, a country that has suffered so much war, so much torment, and left thousands of orphans. And now it's my turn to speak to the fatherless, to speak to lost boys, to speak with the voice of a father telling the world of their deepest need for our Heavenly Father. Wow, what an amazing testimony. Thomas Irvin, a prodigal son of sorts, finally found the father figure he could depend on. A father who would never leave him or forsake him. A father who he could spend eternity with, his Heavenly Father. If you've been listening to our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, you know that we've been answering questions or reading comments from listeners, and many times listeners have questions about sound effects. Well, in this very episode, you listen to scenes involving um, military planes, very specific military planes. In fact, Demetrius Troy, our sound man for the show, was able to provide sound effects of actual warthog airplanes to help convey a more realistic and accurate depiction. Uh, Demetrius is also one of our regular actors here at Unshackled. In this episode, he played the roles of Jesse and Riley, both. Very versatile artist, Demetrius. Um, so that's a little bit of uh, behind the scenes of the Unshackled program. So if you have a question or comment for us here at Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, something you may be curious about or even want to share with us, you can write us at podcast at unshackled.org, or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can also share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review 
or rate our podcast. And folks, we really do appreciate your input and encouragement. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. Okay, here's the prize for our upcoming sweepstakes contest. A beautiful wooden scripture plaque, and I believe the scripture uh, on this particular plaque is Hebrews 11.6, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And folks, this plaque is gorgeous, especially if you're looking for daily inspiration from scripture. You will love this authentic and very unique wooden plaque. Um, it's been sawn from a tree branch or a log, and it looks like it, and, uh, and it's cut in such a way so as to keep as much of the bark around the perimeter as possible. It's been handcrafted around the natural character and beauty of the wood that, uh, well, that God created. So all you have to do to enter our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or... Email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. The winner of this sweepstakes for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced on April 5th, but the deadline for entry is March 31st. And next time... Hey, lady, what are you doing? Stop following me! Shut up. Look, I saw you cash your social security check around the corner. Yeah? So, uh, what what does that... Give it. Give me the money. (gasps) What would you do if someone robbed your mom at knife point? Mom, are you okay? Give me the money and I'll go. You're not going anywhere. Let go of me. Drop the knife. I said let go. No way. I'm holding you for the cops. (sighs) Her actions might make more sense when we investigate the events that led up to it. If I let you have your way, you'll never be any good. Turn around. Mom, please. You'll understand someday. I'm doing this because I love you. No! Ow, Mom! Years passed. Stop it! Don't tell me to stop! I am done with this marriage! Yeah, what are you gonna do for money, huh? I'm the one bringing home the bacon. (laughs) Hear all of this unfold when we bring you the classic true story of Georgia, soon on Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Thomas Irvin Part 2 were Tim Frank, Demetrius Troy, Michael Myers, Shaz Campbell, Angela Morris, and John Green. Original music and audio engineer, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, John Fornoff. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama. So, until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.